my presentation for the collaborative project. Our game is called Terra Vita. My research for this collaborative project started off with finding out what ecological justice was. I had heard of the concept before, but I didn't know the specifics of what it really meant. After researching, I came up with a description that I could look back to and see if our game was following the brief. Ecological justice is a concept that links social and environmental justice, recognising the rights and needs of both humans and non-humans, such as animals and nature. How each deserves fair protection from environmental health hazards, both natural and man-made and implies that production and consumption should be based on social needs and ecological balance. For our game, we came up with the slogan, Humanity's Last Chance. This is meant to play into the brief of ecological justice due to the fact it was the last chance to allow our character, the human Artie, to help the little nature spirit, Eco, restore itself, as in this timeline, nature has been completely destroyed. During the game, the nature spirit and human take turns in protecting each other from both health hazards and human actions. The end goal of a person helping nature semi-overthrow the human's factory shows the fact that both have rights and needs that are social and environmental. Since nature and wild animals have basically been abolished and farmed to the point of extinction, they are going to rely on humans so that they, the non-humans, can survive and prosper in better living conditions. This game also indicates through lines of dialogue that the production and consumption has vastly outweighed the social and ecological balance, which also needs to be fixed, and will be fixed due to Artie's and Echo's actions eco actions, sorry, or at least improved to allow the animals and nature right to exist without the threat of extinction. Another important aspect was researching games that had touched on this brief before and games that followed our vision, which was primarily a 2D puzzle solving game. Games that had the same aspect as us included Little Nightmares, with its level progression puzzle solving aspects, Spiritfarer, with its 2D art style, different mechanics as magical abilities, and a following companion, and also a game called Wisp that was presented at the Aesthetica Game Labs, which was also 2D with a player following companion. Another great game I researched was Fireboy and Watergirl. This is a puzzle solving game that requires you, and optionally a partner, to control two characters with one keyboard. The puzzles have specific spaces where only one character could interact due to their element being compatible, meaning it was imperative for characters to work together, as otherwise it would be impossible to complete the level. This game was also great as we both wanted to do a dual controlling aspect. This game with Fireboy and Watergirl, and our game with Artie and Eco. Finding games that had aspects of what we wished to accomplish was incredibly important, as not only did it help us see if it was a good game concept that people have shown interest in in the past, but also to see if a similar game had been done before and was successful. If a game has been exactly like this, with the same premise, genre and type had been created and published, then it would also mean that we would have to come up with a different game idea. What I contributed. I created the UI of the main menu, pause menu, death screen slash menu and did an original concept for the main menu art to give to the animators to have an idea of where the art should go in correlation to the menu and buttons. This was originally more difficult than I suspected, as the controls for eco, which was the mouse movement, was conflicting with the abilities to press buttons when paused. I fixed this by creating a pause time script for when the menus were triggered. This allowed the mouse to be free during this period, so you could click and trigger the buttons. We also had the same problem for when the audio and text was triggered, so I made it so that time was paused there too. 
This was important, as if time wasn't paused while reading, variables like enemies detecting you, eco teleporting through vents, eco being attached to the mouse, and not being able to exit out of the text box would have been big issues. The death menu is triggered currently by spotting an enemy, spotted by an enemy for five seconds, or falling into gas while missing jumps. I created the vent minigame, which consisted of coding a teleport script to go between one vent and into another with a following camera, electricity which kills the player and sets them back to the beginning of that vent minigame, a respawn for the character, and barriers that stop the player from getting through when teleporting into a level via a vent. The issue with the vents is that when I originally created them, I didn't intend for them to be created twice a level. However, this limited us on what we could build. It was easy to set up a two-way system, but it meant when Eco used a vent, he would be sent through back and forth constantly. This was game-breaking, so I ended up making it so there was a pause in the timer. Aaron extended on this and made it even more sound. The electricity at first was difficult to handle due to constantly changing the size. This meant that sometimes the hitboxes were too big and didn't allow eco through at all. When we got feedback via the playtesting, it mentioned that this was still an issue. So I fixed this by testing all of the vents and fixing where they were too big or the level was too difficult because of the hitbox size. For the narrative, I created text and story collectible notes that could be found throughout the levels. Specifically, the worker notes are the ones that I wrote. I made a trigger system for audio text boxes that will appear when walked into, which are barks, or picked up notes. This was also made that when the player exits out of the dialog box before the audio is complete, it will stop the audio as well. I also added an X to allow the player to shut down the text when wanted, or if they had to restart, they didn't have to listen to the entire thing again. The problem with this was, as stated with the menu script, the mouse wasn't disconnecting from eco, meaning that we had to free up the mouse and pause time, since otherwise eco would be left without controls in the scene, or you wouldn't be able to get rid of the text box that contained the dialogue which is game-breaking. I also worked on level design, which consisted of designing levels, then creating them with the mechanics and prefabs that we already made, making sure each level had puzzles that worked and allowed them to progress to the next level. It was also important to make them consistent so when you exited a level from the top floor, the next level would also start on the top floor. I'll be going into more detail of how I did my levels. My first level is a crouch tutorial. This level was built to be a tutorial for crouching and showing that you can get underneath certain walls when they're slightly too tall. This was later turned into an avoiding the enemy tutorial as well. When you go up to the exit, there is a patrolling guard. This was because we felt as if figuring out you needed to avoid the guards and get the timing right was extremely common in games, so we didn't need to do a full dedicated tutorial. Later on, however, there is a level where it teaches you that crouching stops guards from seeing you. I started by figuring out how low Artie's hitbox was when I crouched, and then created a, t a layer on top of that to create the area that you had to go under. I then blocked off the top and added clutter to show that the top wasn't a feasible route. Going up the ladder to the guards, you can easily time it so the guard is facing away while you pull the lever and escape. But since crouching was shown on the controls menu, I thought people might try it, so I added a box to act as a cover. To act as a cover. So if people crouched and the guard couldn't see them, it's because there is a box in the way, and not just because Artie is randomly crouched in front of his face.
vent tutorial. This level was built to be the introduction to vents. Because of the focus on the vents, I decided to make it just one story. I made it so the button Eco had to press was on the other side of the door, so even if you dismissed the text of saying what to do, you could easily deduce how to complete this level. I did this because the level originally didn't have text but just a voice line. However, without subtitles, if anybody was playing on mute, mute they would easily miss it and perhaps get stuck. I wanted the text to be obvious and in the middle, but because of the door blocking it, the text would look weird. So I came up with the idea to lower the ceiling and the floor to give some blank space at the top and then put the text there. Because the bottom half of the level wasn't being accessed, I got rid of the door at the bottom and added a clutter that made it look purely like a storage room. So it didn't look like the character had to figure out a way to go there. Dropbox level. For this level, I wanted to utilise the fact I can make boxes that can't be pushed, but can still be used to block the characters from getting past. We had a prefab for a door that had been turned into a trap door by putting it on his side and getting rid of the trigger box for an opening at the bottom. I used the boxes to block the way and put them on top of a trap door so they would fall when the player triggers the lever. I also put the button on the other side of the pit so it requires the player to bring Eco with them. This level also has a note left by a factory worker. It describes the fact that the outside is completely polluted and the fact that wild animals particularly don't exist anymore or are hardly seen. An avoid the guard level. This was another simple avoid the guard level. However, this time the player has knowledge that crouching can stop the guards from noticing you, which is why I created a bigger space for the player to run across and a shorter turnaround space for the guard. This level is unique in the fact that the button for the door is actually inside of the vent. This is because I noticed this level didn't require Eco to do anything. And since the vents had just been introduced but not really utilised in the sense that Eco can trigger it, I decided that it would be a good idea. It also means for the exit, it isn't really obvious until the player searches all of their possibilities. A gas parkour level. This level was a collaborative project between me and Toby. He came up with the idea of reusing the same gas holes by using an open trapdoor on the top floor. However, I added the doors and vent triggers for this level, along with decorating it, but other than this, the rest was Toby. The final mega level. For this final level, I wanted to show that you had made it to the very front of the factory and that we were now on the main production floor. So I made it four floors to show how vast the scale is. I used almost every mechanic the player had learnt, such as avoiding guards, multiple vents, crouching, electricity, automatic doors, opening and shutting trap doors, ladders, ladders and more. Since the level was four storeys, I needed to come up with a way to physically move past the guard, so I created a basket hanging from the roof that you can crawl underneath. This also gives the illusion that the guard has the job of keeping watch over the entire floor. I needed the exit door to be on the bottom level, considering this was the actual exit to the factory. So I made it so that after completing the level, the character had to go all the way back up to the top and crawl underneath the little ceiling and go all the way down, bringing Eco with them to trigger the button at the final door. After completing a level, you need to move on to the next one, so I created a level move script that when triggered would load and send you to the level connected to the number of the build index you put into the public box. Later on in the process, Aaron, our developer, refined this level move to be automatic, which meant it automatically followed the build index numbers so we didn't have to mess about with making sure every single level was connected properly.
what didn't happen? Something that was in our original plan was to have Eco, our little nature spirit, be able to transform into different animals and wield different abilities. Our initial presentation showed these concepts by smashing obstacles as a monkey and reacting to electricity as an eel. However, due to time constraints, we unfortunately never even had the time to think about adding these mechanics. Something that I wanted to make sure of while making levels during this project was continuity. Continuity should be continuing levels on the same floor and using a specific switch for the same objects in each level. Having a specific number of vents and the vent flowing in the direction of the minigame, meaning no more vents in the minigame that were are in the actual level. Or teleporting to the same place, which wouldn't make sense. A specific switch would mean when buttons would control only the doors and levels would only be controlling the trap doors on the floor. Something like this is incredibly important for the player so that they could understand what their goal is and what they were triggering in the level to get to it. However, due to the fact the difference between the buttons and the levers were the fact that buttons could only be pressed by Eco and levers could only be pulled by Artie, it would be difficult. If I had more time to explore this, I would have liked to come up with a system that allowed specific character functions with only one switch, but still make them obvious to what they controlled. This could be changing the colours of the switches, red for doors and purple for trap doors, for example. We almost always had an issue with animation, whether it was an animation not triggering correctly, freezing halfway through, or just flat out didn't work. We managed to fix hitboxes and animation timings to correct all of them apart from the pushing animation, which ended up which ended up hardly ever working, as it only really worked when you press E before entering the trigger zone. After this, we just made sure all the boxes could be pulled in the levels, rather than pushed. This is my dev diary. I primarily sorted it by week, starting on the Friday, as that was when we were in for the full day in university. On the paragraphs, it starts on the Friday at the top, and then as the week progressed, goes through what I did during the week. What we learnt from playtesting. We got some really good feedback from playtesting. I made a QA questionnaire Google document that those who playtested could give us feedback on what they thought of the game, any bugs and their time to complete it so we could make sure that the game was over 10 minutes. Everybody who playtested was in their 20s and we had people who played on average 3-5 to five hours of games a week and one who played over 80 hours a week. On average, it took the players to complete the game 18 minutes. This was with the cutscene, but without all of the dialogue. All of them enjoyed playing the game and thought the tutorial was great and covered everything. The controls were overall rated easy to use, with only one problem that the mouse did not directly link to where Eco was. This led to sometimes going onto their desktop and, and going out of the game because of that. All of the players liked the character design of Artie and Eco. All of the players found the relation to ecological justice, and all of the players that read the notes understood the story. What the playtesters didn't like about the game was the AI voices, and the fact that even though the enemies are right in front of you, but you're crouched, they still can't see you at all, which I admit doesn't make any sense. I believe that this could have been fixed by just adding a longer timer for when you are crouched, rather than not being able to be seen at all. An area to improve on was said to be the variety of puzzles, which I also agree with, but since this is only meant to be the first section of what would have been an entire game, it would make sense that more puzzles would be added on later, and also the guards not seeing you with the crouching problem was also stated. As said earlier, there were some problems with the vents and electricity's hitboxes. 
They were sometimes too big, which made the vents incompletable, which frustrated some players, as even though they didn't visually hit the electricity, they would be sent back all the way to the beginning of the vent section. This was later fixed, as stated above. What I learned Before beginning this project, I had never even opened Unity before. I wanted to learn it, however I was adamant that I wouldn't be able to write or understand code. In this case, it was C-sharp. However, during this project, I found that I actually enjoy it. And I actually can find myself understanding the code as it's written and writing it myself. And I can't wait to learn more. This was my first proper collaborative project with people that specialised in different subjects which could make up a full team. My only prior knowledge is the small games jam I did in college over two years ago. This collaborative project showed me what the process could be like for smaller games and taught me that in the future, with some help, I could fully be able to make a game which I never thought was possible. My team was Team Grasshopper. Our team consisted of four games designers, three animators and one developer. The animators, Sophie, Betty and Ben, were amazing to work with, bringing our game to life with their character design, level art and cutscenes. They always had a quick turnaround and were great with communication. Our developer, Aaron Yalman, was also great as he was responsible for having Eco being controlled by the mouse, Eco's behaviour, enemy behaviour, along with fixing jumping and crouching for the main character Artie. We did have some issues with communication as he didn't come in physically to many classes due to travel issues and overriding work, but it ended up being a mix up with being in a separate branch to us, so it was an easy fix in the end. The other games designers, Ben and Toby, were also fantastic to collaborate with. At first, I thought it was going to be quite awkward, but just after a few weeks, we managed to get into the flow and work together easily to create mechanics and levels we were proud of and happy with. Unfortunately, we did have some issues with Jamie, as he only turned up for a few lessons and ultimately didn't contribute anything to this project. We tried to communicate with him, but after two months of no work, I took over his jobs of coding teleport script and the vents as a whole.